our side here is a symmetry okay and uh, for the top of the domain and the side of the domain uh, usually uh, fluent will recognize these as a wall and uh, what you would like to do since our um, our domain is large enough and far enough from the body so that this wall here will have really no influence on the flow features around the car we can put both of these as a symmetry okay and what this means it's it's not that they're symmetrical and that we're going to mirror anything about this face or this face here it just means that uh, the symmetry condition in fluent is going to be applied which is a, a no shear stress wall so it's same as basically picking uh, uh, just a regular wall function and then saying it has a zero shear stress so why not just name it a symmetry so we're going to name this uh, symmetry top and uh, symmetry side okay and now one more remains and this is our floor or the road or whatever you want to call it I'm just gonna name it road and we would like to kind of have those prism elements on the road as well um, so we're going to include this in our program controlled inflation now uh, the default thing uh, the default option for inflation in for fluent flow is smooth transition but um, I've kind of found a document on the internet which is best practice guidelines for automotive external aerodynamics with fluent and you can find this uh, in the links in the description of the video I'm going to put it there and basically um, someone was nice enough to kind of outline all of the best methods that are used in uh, mesh generation and uh, kind of fluent as a solver so what they recommend here is uh, using uh, using the um, uh, inflation method of first aspect ratio and the settings of five elements growth ratio of 20% and a, ra a ratio of five so what we're going to do is what they said so under a smooth transition click down and pick the first aspect ratio and the defaults are going to be 5 5 and 1.2 which is great for us so uh, under advanced options here if you put this as yes there is a bunch of them opened and basically the only one that you would maybe like to um, upgrade is the smoothing iterations and you can put these as 10 or I think the maximum is 20 so uh, do that and put put no back here okay and now we can update our mesh again so let's just zoom in for a before and after okay and I'm going to update okay so we have created our prism layer which is going to kind of capture the boundary layer and as you can see here with the first aspect ratio picked out uh, there is a growth of elements in the direction in this direction and the last prism element has a, a nice volumetric transition into the first tetrahedral and this is kind of important because you do not want this to be any larger than the than the 20 percent growth that we have defined for our volume mesh and with the, the smooth transition it it's much lower this is this element would kind of maybe be cut in half and this one will, would still be the same size so we'll leave this as uh, fluent guys recommended now if we zoom back out okay you can see that it also grew some elements on our road so uh, what you can do to check uh, kind of uh, how your mesh looks maybe uh, in, a, in a cross section I'm going to just zoom in slightly here and you can click here and put in a new section plane you would just kind of left click hold and then pull your line and you can kind of put it in any direction that you want I kind of want to cross uh, cross the leg here and just see how that looks and you would click the Z direction to look at your mesh from the front okay this kind of looks very crap and you would like to click this little pyramid here to show the whole elements okay and now it's showing you the whole elements and this looks kind of much better and you can see how the inflation layer looks all around your body okay 
and maybe we can check out how it looks near the floor here and you can see that it kind of did a little compression when the elements got smaller so this is everything is pretty much fine except uh, if you click the minus x direction you can see these elements kind of grow as they uh, as we go further away away from our body and what you would like to do is another recommendation from the fluent germany is to create a volume control box around the body where we can limit our elements to a certain size just like we did th with the phase sizing function and this is going to provide us with a, with, a, with better controls uh, later on and uh, to refine the mesh automatically and stuff like that. Uh, there are several ways of doing this and uh, one of them is to create kind of it's called the sphere of influence so what you can do is click on the mesh insert and another sizing function and then you would uh, maybe click your body here and check that and then under here you can pick a sphere of influence and now you would define a sphere center and maybe we can just put this in a little vertex just to show you how it works mm. okay and let's say sphere radius 200 and let's say we are going to limit our elements also to 10 or let's say 500 here okay and now if you clicked your update okay and it has created a mesh so you can see that it, it just uh, creates a, a kind of a virtual sphere inside which the elements can be limited to a certain growth but uh, there is a drawback to this and um, I can't seem to recall what it is but um, I know it kind of uh, disables your edge sizing functions and stuff like that so uh, we do not want to use that one so we're going to delete this and I'm going to show you another way with which we can refine elements in the region where we want them so we're going to exit this for a while and go back into design modeler and create some additional geometry so I'm going to edit this here Okay, and now we're just going to put a kind of a box around our body inside which we can kind of limit the elements. So you would like to go into the YZ plane. I've already made a couple of sketches here. We can delete this one and I'm just going to delete this one too. So there is no confusion. Okay, so YZ plane click the little blue icon with the dot here which is a new sketch and you would go under sketching here on the left you would create a rectangle and let's zoom in a bit so when you kind of uh, get near your axis it will create a little C here so we can just click and drag now go under dimension and we can just say for example we want this to be let's say 2000 millimeters Okay, okay, let's say 2500. Uh, and we want our vertical dimension to be, let's say, 500. Okay, so uh, the fluent guys you can read in, in the document that they recommend to be half a car length in front, half a car length to the top, and a car length to the rear for the, for the wake region. So um, we can just uh, add some more dimensions here. Uh, you can see a little illogicality here, uh, the vertical dimension is, is actually a horizontal one, but uh, that's due to the, how the body was rotated in SOLIDWORKS. So we can go to vertical now and click our vertical axis here and this edge here. So we can specify this to be a car length, which is our 1044 uh, millimeters, and you can well, basically that's it. It would be overdefined if we did anything else to it. So let's leave this box as it is. Maybe drop this down to. Okay, this is fine. And now you would click modeling, and from this sketch, it, it's autom automatically going to create an extrude. If you just click extrude, you can see it 
the base object is a sketch 4 which is our sketch and uh, you can leave everything here with the direction normal and uh, fixed and blah 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 and we will just try to create let's say 200 millimeters and if you rotate a bit you can see how far that's gonna go maybe look at it from the front and we want it slightly more let's say 250 or even 350 okay this is kind of fine so it's the same to the side as it, as it is from the top surface up okay and just click generate again and now we have our solid which is going to be a body of influence in the meshing software so uh, this does not have to be changed into a fluid like the air domain was we're just going to call this our car box and leave it as a solid we can just add a freeze for later on if we if we do anything else so that's a car box and we're going to exit this go back into our meshing click edit and it's going to ask you it's going to recognize that the upstream data has been modified and if we wanted to reread and we do want to reread okay and it's going to attach the body now and it is done okay so we can see there is a solid here and you can check under geometry we have our air and our car box so right click mesh insert sizing and for our geometry selection we want our body of influence to influence the air domain so we click anywhere on the air domain and click apply and then under the type here you would choose a body of influence and as a body of influence you would choose our car box and then again we can limit our element size for example to 15 millimeters and leave the growth rate as default so after those 15 millimeters it's going to continue growing with a 20 percent growth rate so we're going to go under mesh and another update okay the meshing is done and as you can see uh, it has limited the size of the elements inside uh, our car box but the car box itself as a body was not meshed but it's still kind of hanging here so you can right click on the car box and hide the body okay do not suppress it because if you suppress it it's owing it's also going to suppress this body sizing function here okay so just right click and hide and now if we if we go back under mesh you can see we have our 15 millimeters growth kept I mean like our growth is uh, capped at 15 millimeters there are these sort of kind of weird little uh, clusters of elements over here but uh, this is uh, I think due to the fact that it's trying to um, it's our symmetry plane is getting into the into the way of the growth of the elements but it's not really to be worried about so this is okay and what you would like to do now is kind of check your statistics maybe and we can see here that our mesh is around 1.7 million elements and you can check the quality of your elements here with the mesh metric and uh, you can either use element quality or all of these kind of here but I like to use skewness and you can read online all about skewness and what it is and what it means but basically you don't you do not want it to be over 0 0.95 and if it's over that then the mesh is the mesh is kind of of catastrophic quality so we can see our maximum here is 0 0.83 which is not ideal but um, no the fluent as an unstructured solver is not going to comp complain about this it can solve anything up to 0 0.92 or 0 0.95 but you can see your average here is 0 0.22 and that's kind of okay so i will bring this back to none we have our name selections for fluent and uh, this will for now conclude our tutorial on meshing however uh, maybe i can show you a few more things